This video discusses methodology and methods. I will start with a short review of paradigms and their components before discussing what methodology is and also introducing a few methods that you can use for research. Guva and Lincoln define paradigms as a structure that includes three components. Those components are ontology, epistemology, and methodology. These three components are interrelated because your beliefs about the nature of reality determine what you can know about it and whether or not it is actually knowledge rather than speculation in both ontology and epistemology have an impact on methodology or the rules, assumptions, and methods that you might use to attain knowledge. Though this presentation focuses on methodology, I'll review the relationships between all three aspects through a couple of examples. With a realist ontology, Reality is objective. That means that it exists regardless of the observer, and even if there is no one there to describe it, reality does not cease to exist. For epistemology, positivism is an alternative. Positivism contends that the only true knowledge comes from empirical science. In other words, True knowledge comes from our ability to observe phenomena, craft hypotheses to explain them, and test those hypotheses. Qualitative methods are preferred in this case. On the other hand, an idealist ontology believes that reality is subjective. It does not exist independently. In fact, Reality is only there if there is someone there who can observe it and perceive it. In terms of epistemology, constructivism is a viable alternative. In this view, we construct knowledge through social interactions and through interpretations of experiences and phenomena. A preferred method in this case would be the interview. What I have described here are not the only ways to think about knowledge and inquiry. However, this model can explain the differences between academic cultures beyond just subject matter. The differences are paradigmatic, which means that they are differences in ontology, epistemology, and methodology. Let's talk about methodology. Methodology indicates the rules, assumptions, and methods that researchers follow. They tend to be discipline specific. And even though people sometimes use the term as a synonym for method, there is more to methodology than just method. In fact, methodology is about making decisions. All researchers make decisions when they carry out a project. These decisions run throughout the entire research process. They include the following questions. What problem am I interested in? What is my research topic? What is my research question? What kind of data, information, or materials do I need? How will I present my end product? What method can I use to collect and analyze my information? According to Klo and Nut Brown, the methods we use in research are the result of all other questions and decisions we make as part of a methodology. For them, there is a relationship between the method you choose 
and your particular needs and purposes, which depend on the topic you are interested in and the questions you ask about it. Methods are tools. They are a means to an end. They are tools we use for a specific purpose. For example, if your goal is to write a paper that reviews existing research in a particular field, the most appropriate method would be library research. This could involve defining keywords, selecting a database or using quick search, specifying source types, and assessing source quality, among others. In any case, we should realize that the tools we choose limit the types of knowledge we can generate. For example, a political scientist may want to examine people's attitudes, behaviors, preferences, and opinions about candidates for political office. She may use surveys to accomplish this goal. Surveys provide quantitative data, often from large samples of people that may be dispersed geographically. In this case, a sample is a subset of a population. Surveys usually consist of close-ended questions, and their results are meant to be generalizable. That is, you should be able to use the survey to make claims about an entire population based on your sample. This is an example of a survey question. As you can see, you have limited response choices. Essentially, you can either answer yes or no or refuse to respond, but you are not expected to explain any further. This is called a close-ended question. On the other hand, an anthropologist could also be interested in attitudes, behaviors, preferences, and opinions. However, he may require more in-depth information that can't be obtained from a survey. The interview may be the best method to accomplish that. Interviews are used to collect qualitative information from small groups or individuals. The format of the interview is conversational with open-ended questions. The results from interviews are not meant to be generalizable, but particular and specific to the group or person that they pertain to. Here's an example of an interview. This is Martha Doty Freeman. The date is January 22nd, 2010. I'm interviewing Kenny Fletcher at the San Antonio River Authority as part of the River Authority's Oral History Project. So tell me some about your background. I was born in San Angelo, Texas. And I was about two, my parents moved here, which was a good thing, because uh, dust storms up there didn't agree with me. Mm -hmm. I ended up graduating from Churchill High School in 71 and uh, went to San Antonio College and then ended up at Texas Tech. Oh. I thought about becoming a lawyer and then of course that was about the time of Nixon and I decided that that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so I figured I, if I wanted to do something for a career I should do something that I enjoyed doing. And I got into parks. Now, why did you enjoy that? I just liked the outdoors. It was, uh, you know, fishing, hunting, camping, just being outside, hiking, climbing. It was, uh, I enjoyed it then as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, why can't I do that for a job? So researching it, I found out Texas Tech was one of the better schools in the, in the 70s without leaving the state. I also wanted to go where there was snow and there was snow in Lubbock. <laughs> Every once My reasons in a while. <laughs> for going were not the best, but that's how I got there, and I ended up with a degree in Parks Administration, mm -hmm. and uh, 
came back to San Antonio and started work with the Fair Oaks Country Club as their groundskeeper. I took care of all the plants and the grounds around the tennis courts and the clubhouse. And I had a, a greenhouse because I took care of all the plants inside. When I went to Tech, Parks Administration, Landscape Architecture, and Horticulture were all separate degrees. And what, but when I, now they're all separate degrees. When I was there, we had to take something in everything. We had to do topographical maps. We had to learn how to do aerial photos and read them and then make maps from them. We had to do botany. We had to do ethnobotany. I, some of that stuff was pretty dry for me, but I made it. <laughs> to conclude, I would like to point out that there are several typologies used to classify methods. One of the most common one is to think of methods as being either quantitative or qualitative. Typically, this has meant that you have to pick one or the other. You cannot do both. However, nowadays, you can use mixed methods. In any case, the methods you choose have to be suited to the task and objectives you want to accomplish. And it is always important to keep that in mind. Beyond just thinking of Am I a quantitative researcher or a qualitative researcher? Think of what you want to get from the research that you conduct. <laughs>